Our second example of simulation is a uh, simulation of inventory system. We're going to consider an example of Allen appliance who stock and sell a kitchen chef electric mixer. We will simulate inventory starting from 25 units. We'll simulate a uh, situation in which there is a random number of customers arriving every day and each customer has a random demand. You have a distribution, so we're expecting between zero and four customers a day with some random uh, probabilities. And then notice that each customer can uh, buy between one and four uh, kitchen chef mixers. So uh, so they will actually, the, the demand per customer will also be random. Now when Allen sells uh, those uh, products, they of course have to buy them from the supplier and they are going to use the following policy, inventory policy. Uh, every time when they have 10 items or less, they will order another 25 units provided that there isn't an order being shipped right now. And uh, we have to also look at costs. We will have $1 per week per unit uh, cost of holding and then cost of ordering. When we order, regardless of how much we order, we will pay $45. And then also we have to know when we order in a certain week, the, the order will be delivered two weeks later, but at the beginning of the week, two weeks later, not at the end. So, and also we will consider a back order. We will say if, if there is demand and there is, uh, there is no, uh, no units available to satisfy the demand, we will put those, um, those, this, this demand on back order, which means basically we will satisfy this demand, but when, only when, when we receive the next batch, <coughs> the next order of 25 items. Now, uh, this is not coming for free. We will have a back order cost of $5 per unit per week. So every time customers are waiting for their products for a week, they, they are, uh, we're paying them if equivalent of $5. Maybe we're giving them a discount or something like this. And if they wake, wait longer, we're paying these $5 per week multiple uh, times, right, for multiple weeks. So Alan would like to simulate this uh, situation, this uh, system, inventory system, to determine average weekly cost of inventory. So how can we do this? So first of all, we have to take the random uh, uh, numbers, like number of customers and num demand per customer. We have to do the mapping. So I prepared here a table with a third column, mapping, right? And this is 10% probability. I need to map it to 10 numbers. So 0 to 9 would be the first 10 numbers. And then this is 10 till uh, 30 numbers will be till 39. And then this is 25 numbers from 40 till 64. This is going to be 20 numbers, 65 till uh, 84. And this is going to be 15 numbers from 85 till 99. This is 15 numbers. We have a uh, distribution random number mapping here. Similarly, we have to uh, do the mapping for the demand per customer. So one demand, one unit is with 10% probability. We will map this to first 10 numbers, 0 to 9, then 15 numbers, 10 to 24, 25, 40 numbers till 64, and then 35 numbers, 65 to 99. So we have our random number mapping. We are ready to generate a uh, random number of customers, random demand per customer. And just for the record, we I saved here. So the, the policy, inventory policy is always like this. Order, or actually, the, the, uh, if it is uh, uh, EOQ policy, when we order always the same quantity, we order Q when inventory drops to R or below. Uh, and there is no outstanding order, of course, in this case. And so we have uh, the parameters currently are 25, order 25, when we have 10 or less units. And we, for, for the record also, I saved the costs here, ordering, holding, and back order costs. So we're going to simulate here, uh, not customer by customer, like in the queuing simulation, but in this case, time unit by time unit. In this case, one week is a time time unit which we want to simulate. So we'll start with week one. And now first thing I want to simulate is the number of customers and the demand per customer. But for this, of course, I need <coughs> I need to, to, to have two random numbers or actually more than two possibly. So I prepared some random numbers. My first random number I got from Excel was 43. And if you look at for number of customers, 43 is mapped to uh, 
two customers. So I'll have two customers. Now, if I have two customers, the demand per customer has to be generated for both of those customers, right, for each of them. So I need two random numbers. Again, I prepared some random numbers, 45 and 87. So I have this for customer one, this is for customer two, right? So I need to now map this through this mapping. 45 is mapped to demand three and 87 maps to demand four. So a total demand in this week is actually seven. Notice that I'll have to use the second row here for the, for week one, right? It's okay, I can do that uh, at least here in, in, in my simulation. So <coughs> if I assume we're starting with uh, 25 units of inventory as it was said in the previous slide, uh, if I sell seven units this week, at the end of the week I will have 18, right? I am not going to make any order and I'm not going to receive any order now, right? As because I have 18 units that is still more than 10. So I can now compute my costs. My costs will be I'm holding 18 units till the next week. Each It's for $1 per week, so that's 18 costs. Sorry, this is cost of holding. Ordering costs, I'm not ordering, so there is no ordering. And there is no back order. I still have units in inventory, so I don't have any costs here. So my total cost per week is 18. Right? I have simulated the first week. So in the second week, what's going to happen? Again, I have to generate a number of customers. So let's say the random number was 93. I've again prepared this from Excel. Um, so number of customers for 93, 93 maps to four customers. So, so that's going to be interesting. We'll have four customers. And again, now I have to simulate demand per customer for four customers. So what is it going to be? It's going, I, I, I have random numbers eight, 26, 73, and 77, right? So this is customer one, two, three, four. So eight maps to un one unit of demand, 26 maps to two, three units of demand, 73 and 77, both four and four. So total demand this week is 12 units, right? One plus three plus four plus four. So I have 12 units of demand. So if I start with 18, right? This is just copying the, the value. I start with 18 units uh, at the beginning of the, the, the week, uh, then minus 12. If I sell 12, I will be left with six units, right? Now look at the inventory policy. It says 10 or less. If, the, if you have 10 or less units in inventory, then order a new batch. So now we will have to say here, we order 25 units, right? We order Q. So there is a cost of ordering this time, $45. It doesn't matter how much we order, we pay $45. There is a holding cost. We still have six units, so we pay six times $1 times six, $6 for holding, and there is no back order. So this week, my cost is $51 right and and that that's the end of week two what happens in week three again I need a random number let's say random number was 66 66 for number of customers is mapped to three customers so again I need three random numbers 96 28 and 22 let's assume these are the random numbers so this is going to be mapped to four three and two demands per customer. So the total is nine. The, the sum of those three is nine. So again, if I start, I have six units in inventory, but I have the nine units of demand. So what happens here is, of course, we don't have enough units to satisfy the demand. So we are going to sell six because that's what we have. And then the three remaining units we will put on back order. So strictly speaking, inventory level is zero here, but we have three units of back order. And it's a good idea whenever you have back order, back order is allowed in this case, then instead of saving inventory level zero, you save it as minus three. What this means is basically we have zero units and we have three units put on back order. Three units, there are customers waiting for those three units and we will deliver them as soon as we receive them, right? But we haven't received them yet. This is, right, in this week we're still waiting for the order. So we're not ordering, even though we have less than 10 units now, we're not ordering because uh, we are waiting for an order. This order in week two will arrive at the beginning of week four. So it, it still hasn't arrived. So I have no cost here. 
I have no holding cost in this case because I'm not holding anything, but I have back order cost, and as we said, it's five dollars per unit on back order, so it's five dollars times three, not times minus three, times three, three units are on back order. So I have fifteen dollar cost, and this fifteen is the total actually for this week, and it's all the cost of back order. What happens in week four now? Well, in week four, we again have to generate the demand. Let's assume a random number here is 14. 14 maps to one customer. So if there's one customer, uh, we need one random number for the demand. Let's say this random number is 12. So if I take 12, 12 maps to two units of demand. So my total demand is two units because there's only one customer asking for two units. Now what is the beginning inventory? Now we are, this is the week when we receive, right? We receive 25 units. So I'll record receiving here. So that means I don't have minus three at the beginning. I have minus three plus 25. I have 22, right? Although I received 25, notice I immediately send the three units to the customers that requested them a week ago, right? A week before. So, um, so now I will have 22 units and the demand is 2, so 22 minus 2 is 20. So at the end of the week I will have 20 units, right? Now I will have no ordering cost. I paid for this order before, $45. I will have holding cost because I have 20 units, so I have 20 times $1, $20 cost. And I have no back order cost because I already uh, right, delivered those units that I that were on back order last week, so there is no cost here. So my total cost is twenty. And let's do one more week, week five. Let's say the random number now is three, and if the random number is three, three maps to zero customers. What happens now? Well, if I have zero customers, I don't need to generate any demand per customer, and my total demand is zero this week. No customers, no demand, right? Starting inventory is 20 and ending inventory is still 20. I do not order, right? This is still more than 10. So I don't have any ordering cost. I still have holding cost 20. No back order cost is still 20, right? So uh, I could of course simulate much longer than this and especially if I could program this in Excel, right? But what is interesting to notice is is what is the performance measure we wanted to test. We wanted to see average weekly cost. So we've simulated this for five weeks and we see the weekly costs were 18, 51, 15, 20 and 20. That's the performance measure we wanted to check. So now we can actually see what's the average, right? Average weekly cost, average weekly cost. What is it equal to? Well, we have to take the sum of costs 18 plus 51 plus 15 plus 20 plus 20 and average it, right? So that we have to divide by 5 and if you do the computation here, you'll see it is $24.8, right? So we see the cost, weekly cost on average is $24.8 based on this one experiment one simulation experiment. Now of course again as before to get a more realistic reliable uh, result we would have to run longer experiments and this is just one experiment so we would need to run longer and then repeat this experiment a number of times do statistical analysis for example compute confidence interval for for the average weekly cost. So that concludes the inventory uh, simulation example.